seems like just yesterday we began this course, DTF 101, with our emphasis on film, and we are so proud that all of you made it all the way through. Now, if you were bad students, you skipped class this semester, don't worry, you can review all the past lessons by clicking up here. We saved the very best for last, it's graduation day, guys, and it's time for our final review. Let's fire it up one more time. You ready? Or is it supposed to be this way? Let me know in the comments below. Let's dive into it. Now we mentioned this final review is gonna be cumulative of the entire semester. So let's take it back to the very first lesson. I'm talking about the anti-static layer, which also happens to be the first layer of your PET or DTF film. I would say it's probably the main culprit if you do happen to be experiencing excess powder around your printed image on the film itself. Now, bear in mind, humidity can play a factor here, I suppose, but I'm gonna tell you, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be due to the anti-static layer. This needs to be properly and evenly coated to ensure that our transfers stay nice and crispy. Now, as a means of being extra, extra careful, I do like to use our anti-static mats available at aprintsupplyco.com. This is gonna be a great way to, like I said, extra, extra careful to ensure that none of that powder is transferring along with my printed image. Moving on to lesson two. Here we covered a few different components of the DTF film. We're talking about the GSM, the consistency, and we broke down the different sorts of release layers on the PET or DTF film. So let's start with GSM. The grams per square meter or thickness of the film is not necessarily as big a component here with DTF, especially for my individual sheet printers. DTF film GSM can typically range from about 75 to 100, with 75 being sort of the standard as far as what we've seen. Now it is worth noting, for rolled DTF printer setups, 75 GSM is gonna be a little more ideal as it's not gonna be as heavy and can pass through the roller systems a little bit better. We did also tackle consistency. Now with DTF being such a rise in popularity over the last couple years, we've been seeing supplies, materials, and equipment really coming from all corners of the globe. You wanna partner with big companies who understand what they're doing, not little mom and shop and fly by night locations that are just kinda of diving in for the gold rush. That's a big key component in deciding which companies that we partner with to deliver the very best direct-to-film printing materials and supplies to you, our valuable customer, and the print community as a whole. You wanna partner with brands that know what they're doing so you have consistent batches every time, batch in, batch out. Now lesson two was pretty jam-packed as we did also cover the different sorts of release layers with the PET or DTF film. Let's start with Hot Peel, just what it sounds like, ready to be removed immediately after application ideally in a perfect world. Through our testing of 30 different films globally, we found it a little more difficult to find a consistent performer as far as the hot peel is concerned. What I've noticed in some, maybe lesser companies or manufacturers, possibly a sweaty, glossy, or maybe even kind of oily appearance. And this is gonna be due to the amount of this layer that's applied to the film. Cold peel is typically gonna be a more reliable performer as it will have higher levels of this layer applied. One of the drawbacks I would say is you do wanna wait for this to return back to normal room temperature before removing the film once applied to your garments. However, in a production setting, after you've placed your first transfer, continue in your workflow. After a couple garments, that first one will be ready back at room temperature and you can safely perform the cold peel. Now it is worth touching on warm peel, which is kinda of sorta of in the middle, not quite hot or cold. Manufacturers may advise waiting some odd three to five seconds before removing the transfer Additionally, you can also rub your transfer once applied to the garment with a piece of fabric or cloth, and that'll also help speed up that warm release layer process. One of the other things to be concerned or at least aware of in regards to the hot peel is gonna be possibly ink left over on the film once applied. Those cold peel films will sit onto the garment a little longer and give it time to really absorb onto the fibers. Next up, we got hands-on with hand feel. You know, you can have the most beautifully printed transfer in the world, but if it feels like garbage once applied, are you really gonna have a repeat customer? I don't think so. We're using soft water-based textile ink, so it should have a tremendous soft feel once applied and while worn. Now, do you feel the transfer on the garment? We like to use the speed bump analogy, where the garment ends and the transfer begins. How is the finish? How is the texture? Is there a glossy or oily appearance? How is the feel once worn? These are all key factors that you should be keeping in mind if you're doing any kind of direct-to-film printing applications. Many transfers, once applied, can leave a bit of a gloss or almost shiny appearance. And if you don't like that, we must perform what's called the second or finishing press. This can serve a multitude of purposes. Firstly, if we were not efficient in removing the excess powder around our printed image, this can give us a chance to kind of burn that hot melting powder into the material. 
Secondly, it's also gonna help us better seal the transfer itself onto the actual fibers. Lastly, what this will do is give you more of a matte or retail appearance if we are trying to avoid that shine or gloss. And my favorite part about the second press, I have found this very effective in improving the hand feel itself once applied to the garment. Now our final lesson of the year was the ink absorbing layer. Now I do advise reviewing this element of DTF as this portion can literally make or break our entire process. You can take a look at the full lesson by clicking up here. Now, in your DTF printing applications, you may have noticed possibly ink puddling or mixing. That's due to the ink absorbing layer. You may have also noticed inaccuracy as far as your colors matching what you have on your file image. That could be related to this layer. Or possibly you may even be seeing white dots from the overprint showing through in your CMYK prints. That could be related to this layer. Remember guys, this could literally make or break your DTF printing process. So you wanna make sure this is not only evenly applied, but properly coated to ensure your very best results. One thing to note, we have seen typically cold peel films performing at a higher level, as they may typically have higher levels of this coating applied. Now in this lesson, we try to take a very objective approach as far as measuring the performance of the ink absorbing layer. Using our special spectrometer measuring tool, we we're able to see how close and accurate our printed and applied graphics were to the original file values. With that in mind, we went ahead and ranked the overall performance of the ink absorbing layer, and here's the objective results that we found. We also measured with an overall criteria based on everything we covered in this lesson, and here's the results as far as how those landed. Here's the results from the five films that we tested overall. Based on the overall criteria of the entire lesson this year, these are gonna be the very best films that we have available to offer to our print community and your valuable customer. And we do wish that every DTF film was a top performer in every category. We did have winners and less winning winners. Not gonna call anyone a loser. You did it guys, you're all DTF experts now. It's our hope you carry these lessons with you forever and always as these are literally the very criteria that we look at as a company when not only deciding who we want to work with, but what we want to offer to our valuable customers and the print community as a whole. I want to give a big thank you to this year's graduating class. You did it. So let's go ahead and start preparing for the master's course. Hope to see all of you back next semester. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and drop a thumbs up on the video on all the videos we've covered so far. My name is Estevan, Professor Estevan. We're all American Principal University. If you do have any questions or comments, we got a section down below over that. We'll see you in the next class.